Hello and welcome back to Matchroom Radio. We are remote for today's episode and I'm home in Brooklyn, New York. And today I'm really excited. We're joined by the chairman of Matchroom Sport, Mr. Eddie Hearn from his home in Brentwood, Essex. Eddie, how are you? Great to see you. Man, we had a thrilling show last week in Las Vegas. Well, also, David, if you look at our backdrops, you have what uh, is Cassius Clay? Well, yeah, Muhammad, well, Muhammad, Muhammad Ali. Ali. But at this time, he was Cassius Clay, sure. And and behind me, I have Muhammad Ali. Yes, so, you do. Yeah, knocking out Sonny Liston. So that, that's uh, one similarity we have. Yes, Vegas was great. Tremendous fight between Devin Haney and Jorge Linares. Great card as well. And, and great to see fans back in Las Vegas in their numbers. And of course, this week, the big news of, of our UK broadcast deal, which has kept me nice and busy the last three days. This is... The last interview I have scheduled after a three-day period. So, luckily, it's you, Dave. I'll try to make it easy on you. You know, like you <laughs> said, it's a, it's a rare non-fight week, but nevertheless, it's been a really busy one. Um, yesterday, Matchroom and DAZN announced a groundbreaking five-year deal, which sees our UK event switch from Sky Sports to DAZN platform for UK and Irish residents starting in July. How did yesterday's announcement go from your side, Eddie? It was really good. I mean, look, it was, it's always difficult, you know, when you, you leave a partner like Sky. I mean, you know, for our whole business, they're, they're a huge part. They're our friends, you know, and, and we, we stay with them with a number of sports. We've been with them for 25 years for boxing, and I've been exclusive to them for the last nine years, and they've been a tremendous partner. You know, it's, it's easy when a sport is hot to be in it and to invest in the sport, but it's much harder to do it when people are telling you, the sport is dead, you know, and, and, and the, the hierarchy are telling you maybe we should stick our money into something else. And that was where we were at with Sky nine years ago, to be quite honest. They backed us. They invested in the sport. And for that, they deserve a huge amount of credit. Everybody knows about our US deal with the zone. You know, in the last three years, it's been, it's been tremendous, even through COVID and, you know, now coming off the back with, with Canelo, the global platform and the launch of that with the zone. And of course, that allowing them to launch in the UK. And we've seen the response across Canelo, Callum Smith, Luke Campbell, Ryan Garcia, Canelo, Billy Joe Saunders. And we've seen those numbers rocket in terms of subscriptions. And, you know, it's a mixture of many things that make, made us make, make the move. You know, that of course, at the same time, you know, you look at the financials of the deal as you do with any deal. And, you know, it was a chance for our fighters to be in the kind of fights and to earn the kind of money that they desire and they ask for on a regular basis. It's an opportunity for them to box on an international platform. I mean, last weekend in Vegas, we saw Martin J. Ward, Ramler Ali and Chantel Cameron make their uh, US debuts in Las Vegas. You saw Jason Quigley from Ireland fight, you know, in one of the fights of the year. Great fight. Uh, on, on, on Great that platform. Fight. So it's, it's allowing our, our stable to develop. And in that sense, we have a responsibility to do the right thing for our fighters. As a business, it gave us an opportunity, again, not just a financial one, but an opportunity to grow on a global level. And this is, for the first time, there is one broadcaster that is responsible for our entire output in every country around the world in any device on any device. And that is so unique. You know, for years and years, you would sell international uh, territories individually in terms of TV rights. Now, you, me, the team, the fighters can go all around the world and say the only place you can watch us is on the zone. And in terms of messaging, that's really simple. And finally, of course, the, the launch of the Matra Media business, which means that we will be responsible in close collaboration with the zone for all live production, all content, um, you know, all, all digital content and particularly the talent. You know, Dave, you know how passionate the UK fans are about the commentary and the presentation. And, and, and we, we will be selecting just a stellar lineup of individuals to be part of this movement. And, and it's exciting. And of course, finally, you know, the, the constant arm wrestle with the UK fans about pay-per-view. You know, oh, it's 20 quid. Oh, he's charging us again. And listen, I, I feel that every pay-per-view we've done, probably back, dating back to Bellew cleverly many years ago, has been fantastic. You know, it's always given people value for money. But with this investment, you're going to see more fights like that 
like the nights where you might have had a debate, whether it's pay-per-view or not, sitting as part of your regular design subscription. And, and that's great news for fight fans. It's, it's absolutely huge news for the whole industry. And, you know, you really just broke down a, a lot of really great points. I want to go through some of them. Um, so let's just dig into some of the finer points of the deal. 16 shows per year. How is that broken up? I mean, we know that you had next gen shows previously. Um, are they going to carry on? Um, also, you know, it's a five year deal. That's a lengthy period of time that really can grow the platform and it can really expand match room further. Yeah, I mean, firstly, it's a minimum of 16 events, you know, and, and these guys are extremely aggressive. I expect that to grow uh, significantly, even in year one. Um, we want to keep the next gen series going. There's a provision of four of those events and 12 what we call uh, normal Saturday fight night shows and four premium events as well. So the, the, the key is flexibility, you know, and, and being responsive to fighter schedules being responsive to opportunities to stage major fights. So I think that, you know, in terms of the global growth over five years, we've seen the numbers on the zone rise incredibly fast in the US, especially coming off the back of three Canelo fights over six months, but also in the UK as well. So it's going to be really interesting to grow those numbers. It's 199 at the moment, which is quite incredible. Uh, £1.99 a month. That won't stay forever. Um, and I'm sure later this year when they get into it thick and fast, that will increase. But I know the numbers it's going to increase to. And it is unbelievable value. And, you know, when you think that you can acquire the Fight Camp series, three of those shows starting July 1st for $1.99 for the month, it's the same as Canelo Alvarez against Billy Joe Saunders. That's a standard pay-per-view fight on any other platform. Right. And that's why they've, they've had such a huge start because the fight fans have embraced it. And almost like this can't be right kind of mentality you know and um i think this is really going to be a platform that's going to be very fight fan friendly i i agree with you and you know one of the really exciting things about it we, we've obviously in the last few years uh people have seen we've done shows in italy um france uzbekistan just to name a few but um you've spoken a lot about going global like really global are there any other new stops on the horizon as part of this this global deal for sure. I mean, yeah, that's a, a big part of what, what we're trying to achieve. And, I, and I, I feel that there's always a debate, you know, who's the biggest promoter in, in what country? And, you know, I don't think there's many that would disagree that we're not number one in the UK. In the US, I think it's a three-horse race right now between Matrim, Top Rank and PBC. And it's difficult to move into that market and try and, you know, take over. But I think we're doing a great job. But none of those promoters in any of those markets are global promoters. You know, you don't see top rank doing shows in the UK and Spain and Italy, and you certainly don't see PBC do that either. So no, that's what we want to do. And, and you know, I love traveling around and exploring new places as you do as well, Dave. And, you know, the schedule has been fantastic. You know, Milan, Barcelona, Tashkent, Monaco, Gibraltar. You know, it's, it, we're really blessed. We're lucky people. Yeah. But the global platform with the zone has really enabled them to receive first-hand data about opportunities that may exist for localized events. Yeah. So the UK was a good example of that. They launched in the UK. They couldn't believe the numbers. Okay, let's focus on the UK. You know, we know we're in Italy. We know we're in Spain. Right. Australia, same thing on the global platform. Great numbers on the zone. There's a big opportunity to, for localized events in Australia. Mexico, of course, with Saul Canelo Alvarez and Eddie Reynoso and those guys. The talent pool there is so, so deep. Canada, Germany, Scandinavia. These are all markets that we will be exploring in the next 12 to 18 months. And again, going back to that one platform, that one broadcaster, it's so unique that you're going into these territories around the world. And on this whole global platform, the plan is a show a week, mm. right? So it's this week, we're in Newcastle. Next week, we're in Vegas. Next week, we're in Milan. Next week, we're in Barcelona. Next week, we're in Sydney. Next week, we're in Guadalajara. Next week, we're back at the O2. This week, we're at Madison Square Gardens. How amazing as a business and a platform would that be that for 52 weeks of the year, even on Christmas Day, if it has to be, we are holding a major event in another country. That's never been done before. That will never be done again. And the only way it can be done is on a global platform like DAZN. So that, that's the dream. 
And we're some way there. You know, I was, I was looking at the schedule. I think we're up to about close to 40 events now, you know, for, the, for these next 12 months. So you better get your uh, air miles ready, Dave. You're going you're gonna to have a lot of work, mate. I know you love chilling out and, and uh, exploring all these great cities. Right. I do. I do. It's, it's something that, you know, for the past few years, we've really been living the dream and we've had a great time in so many different cities around the world. Uh, I don't know if the fans really understand how much fun we actually have. It's, it's, it's really like a family and it's, it's just really been unbelievable. And of course the fighters are a big part of that. And like you just said last week, um, Chantel Cameron, Ramla Ali, Martin J. Ward, um, all boxing in Las Vegas, you know, for a lot of them, that was really a dream. And I, I think, you know, like you said, this is going to be a regular occurrence for these uh, fighters in your stable to be fighting across the world. I think that's, that's a, that's a big, big deal for a lot of fighters. Yeah. I mean, everyone talks about, you know, do match want to be the UFC of boxing who wouldn't want to be, I mean, what a fantastic powerhouse that is, but mm. you're never going to go in and eradicate other, like all the promoters from the sport. And why should you, you know, in MMA, you still have, uh, Bellator, you still have cage warriors, you still have all these other organizations, but the sure. dominant force is UFC. And that's where Matrim want to be. So there's no reason that we can't sit as our own platform, Matrim design globally, where these people are fighting each other. They're, you know, they're, they're, they're fighting our top US talent is going to Las Vegas and fighting for the world title. You know, Daniel Scardina from Milan is going out and fighting at Madison Square Garden for a super middleweight title eliminator. You know, um, our Spanish fighters, you know, go out and fight in Boston. You know, our Australian fighters go and have a big fight in Scandinavia. That's the beauty of a global platform. And, and that's the kind of business that we're trying to create and the schedule that we're trying to create, where we don't have to worry about the politics so much of boxing. And we'll always have to make cross-promotional fights because there'll always be someone that's not with us that someone wants to fight. But if we can build that international stable, there's no reason why we can't keep it in house more, which will mean that the bigger fights will happen. Yeah, I, I think, you know, you're absolutely right. And you do already do a lot of in-house stuff. Um, but you think there's going to be more of that? I mean, there's so many great divisions with, with your in-house fighters. I mean, look at the 154 pound division, just mm. as an example. Yeah. But we got to see those fights, you know, the, we, in boxing, we're, we're always um, guilty of talking about these great stack divisions and all these potential fights and never making them, right? You look at 135 pounds right at the moment, Haney, Garcia, Lopez, even Lomachenko, Tank. Tank. No, one's, no one's fought each other yet, apart from Lomachenko against, against Tio, you know? So these four kings that they talk about, probably princes, I think is a better word at the moment, um, they haven't, they're yet to fight each other. So, you know, on a smaller level, 154 pounds in this country, Anthony Fowler, you know, Ted Cheeseman, even I throw Liam Smith into that, that list, whether he likes it or not at the moment, you know, he's, 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 he's in it, you know, uh, even Sam Eggington, you know, Kieran Conway, Scott Fitzgerald. And we've seen a couple of those fights, but those fights should be round robin fights. Yeah. You know, we should just put a domestic tournament together and say, look, guys, this is it. This is the money. Great money. Great opportunity. Made the best man win. Yep. 140 pounds, you know, right now in the women's division, I'm talking to Lou DiBella saying, look, Lou, you've got Callie Reese, Mary McGee and Christina Lenartu. And I've got Chantel Cameron. Two semifinals, one final. We've got an undisputed champion. We can do it in six months. You know, th these are the things that I like. And, and these are, you know, simple business. It doesn't have yep. to be difficult. You know, but, but people for a long time in boxing have made it too difficult. You know, um, one key takeaway from the press release uh, that was distributed yesterday was that Matchroom Media is going to take control of the production. For the fans who might not know about that kind of side of things, can you just explain a little bit how that differs from, like, let's say our show next week that's live on Sky? Yeah, I mean, it's been a big thought process of mine. If you look at those powerhouses like UFC and WWE, they have their own production companies that put the production in place for their live events. So when you create an event, when you create a narrative for that event, when you hype it consistently and tell the story over a seven or eight week period, then you get to the, the key moment, which is the delivery of the live event. Mm. It's completely out of your control. You know, you've got people running that that haven't been involved in the storytelling or the narrative or might not be on your same wavelength of, of what you've trying to be, what you're trying to create. 
It's not right. about control. It's not about, you know, it's, it's about being able to have that cradle to grave mindset from inception to completion, where you can say, this is what I want on the fight night. This is the ring walk that I want for that individual. And there's a huge investment from the zone on the production, you know, like three, four times the level of a Sky Sports production. And, and you know, Sky's production was great. The talent team, good friends of mine, good people. But this is just turning it up a whole nother notch. And that comes down to, as well, the talent. You know, we've all got our opinions on who's the best commentator, who's the best presenter, who's the best analyst. And what we're not going to do, because this is fresh, is we're not just going to migrate the Sky Sports team into the DAZN team. We are going to bring in some industry legends. We're going to bring in probably some future Hall of Famers. But we're also going to bring in some fresh faces and some fresh talent. But we're not going to bastardize the production by trying to be cool, right? You don't, for me, it's not about that. Yeah, we can sprinkle some in. But the foundations, what boxing fans love, which is tremendous lead commentary, great analysis and great voices, that's what got to be built into this production. Absolutely. And a lot of fans want to know, have you already gotten people signed up or is this still currently in play? Yeah, and for, the, for the talent, the talent, the talent team, yeah, we've, we've probably got about 80% already signed up. We had a lot of phone calls yesterday, as you could imagine. Um, but also at the same time, we'll be dropping the announcements next week, probably individually for a lot of this talent. And, you know, Dave, like to the UK fans, the, uh, the talent, the on-screen talent is nearly up there with the fights. You know, they absolutely love to know who they're going to be seeing, who they're going to be listening to. What does the team look like? And, you know, the build here, it's not just the live event experience, it's content. You know, it's documentaries, it's shoulder programming, it's analysis, you know, it's tactics, it's, it's going into the full details of the build-up, the fights, the storytelling. And, you know, there's a lot of people that have been emerging from behind the scenes in the last couple of months who I believe are real future broadcast stars. I cannot wait to see it. You know, you touched on this just, just briefly, but I know fans are very uh, interested in this. The DAZN introductory offer is available for a pound, one pound 99. Um, that's the price point right now. Mm. Realistically, how long will that last? I think that when we start getting into the nuts and bolts of the new season, which starts in September, of course, you know, we know that on a deal of this size, one pound 99 is not sustainable. You know, Again, they, they want to handcuff me to talk too much about their corporate uh, messaging. But I can tell you that I know the price that it's likely to go to. And it is much cheaper than you, you expected it to go to, in my opinion. And it's unbelievable value for money. Um, what I do know is that 199 price point will stay in place for June, for July, and for August for sure. So you're going to get the three weeks of fight camp as part of that introductory price still. And who knows, you know, these, they're, they're generous people. They love the fans, the zone. So you never know. They might, they might extend it even a little longer. You know, you just said um, this deal kicks off for Fight Camp on July 31st. It's going to run for three weeks. Um, we know we've got Tommy McCarthy and CBS, Chris Billum Smith. That's one fight that's confirmed. Is there anything else you can tell us at this stage? Well, I can tell you that on June the 14th, we will be staging an event actually in the garden, which is right in front of me. Uh, the, the home of Fight Camp to announce the entire uh, cards. There will be at least three world title fights over the three week period. Some great domestic fights, one of which you mentioned there. Some great heavyweight fights, some great international fights, a couple of big rematches as well. So, again, I'm, I'm trying to do my, uh, my job of not saying too much before the official announcement, but gave you a couple of good leads there. Yeah. Um, but, but, you know, ultimately, we're going to see a fantastic fight camp. You're going to see, you know, a, a real souped up fight camp. Um, and this time, we're going to have fans involved. I mean, how many can we real, realistically get into Matchroom Square Garden, Eddie? Somewhere around three or 400, you know, it's going to be, which is going to be a lot in terms of the space we have, as you know. But it's just going to be great to see people there enjoying themselves. It's going to be one of the hot, hottest tickets in town. So we're very limited in terms of numbers, but it's going to be a great atmosphere. The sun's going to hopefully be shining and we're going to kick this thing off in style. 
it'll, it'll shine on us. And I can't wait to hear those fans. I'll tell you that, you know, after that also um, Josh Warrington's rematch with Mauricio Lara, uh, that's also on the schedule. Um, it well, is that, is that on the schedule? I mean, he was yeah. supposed to, he was supposed to fight in Leeds, and also, is it going to be at Headingley? What What do you think about that? So again, that that will be part of the schedule that's going to be announced. That is in play. Headingley, um, unfortunately, didn't get cleared by the council for that license. That hopefully will has been appealed. Where it has been appealed, and hopefully that can get overturned for September the fourth. Just a massive event. I mean, you know, Warrington Lara was just one of the most harrowing defeats yeah. I've seen in person. I mean, I know obviously you were there and especially behind closed doors. And, and that's a fight where Josh Warrington is really fighting for his career, you know, and, and he wants that fight. A lot of people said, stay away from that guy. You know, you do not want to be going straight back into that fight. Josh Warrington said, I want to go straight back into that fight. I believe I can beat him. He had a chat with AJ. You know, they talked about the, the two devastating defeats to Mexicans and how they overcome that. And he wants to do it. You know, he wants to do it back in Leeds in front of his fans. And again, we've got some cracking fights lined up for that card as well. But that's a real, you know, defining moment in Josh Warrington's career, the rematch with Maurizio Lara. You know, how much have you mapped out for your UK shows? Is it up to the end of the year? How far in advance have you? Pretty much, you yeah. Pretty much. I mean, again, you know, we're looking at fight camp and then we've got shows, obviously, in September, October, November, December. And they're pretty much in play at the moment already. And, and you know, for, in terms of the main events, um, look, we'd love to do the Chisora Parker rematch as well. I think that, that's a great heavyweight fight that I'd love to see again. Um, so many other fighters are going to be going for world championships. You've got Lawrence Coley defending his. Joshua Blatz is going to be in big step ups. Connor Ben wants to fight three times this year if he can. You know, Chantel Cameron's got to be undisputed. Katie Taylor's got big fights coming up. Savannah Marshall, can we do the Clarissa Shields fight? I mean, there's so many fights to talk about. And Dillian White, you know, what's he going to do next? Obviously, um, the heavyweight division on fire, just, you know, there's a lot of work to do, Dave. I've got this little pad here and I just spend most of my days just writing down fights and it just, everyone here takes a mickey out of me because I'm the only one who uses a pad in the <laughs> office, right? But, but for me, when I do the press conferences, that all helps me, you know, it helps it sink in here so we don't need to sit there with notes. Absolutely. You know, you talked about Dillian White right there and two notice, noticeable absentees from yesterday's announcement were Anthony Joshua and Dillian White. Can you just clarify their position with this deal? Yeah, I mean, firstly, Anthony Joshua is not part of this deal. You know, he's he's outside of that. And Dillian White, you know, every matchroom show outside of Anthony Joshua will sit exclusively on the zone. You know, with, with Dillian White, he has been part of that pay-per-view system for quite a while. And obviously, that's not the immediate plans of the zone. So we're talking to Dillian White about him boxing in September or end of August. I wanted him to fight in America, you know, and go and take a fight over there to make some noise. We're going to sit down with him at the beginning of next week and, and map out his next fight. But you should expect to see Dillian White in September. Well, you know, I'm really excited about this whole thing. It's, it's huge news for the whole industry. Um, and I know the fans are, are really excited about this. And, you know, look, as with most good things, they come to an end, um, you know, as, as with the boxing relationship with Sky Sports, which has been wonderful. Um, it obviously finishes next Saturday in Newcastle uh, with the return of the Sandman, Lewis Ritson versus Jeremiah Ponce. Great fight. Yeah, it's just a great fight. I, I know this must, like you said, this is, must have been a really, really difficult decision for you. Um, because you've been with Sky for so long. And and even, you know, like, how do you counter the Sky Sports PR machine? I mean, they obviously have the very popular Sky Sports News Channel. I mean, they were able to push matchroom events far and wide. Mm. I think, firstly, obviously, it's down to subscriber numbers. You know, if you look at the viewing figures for a Saturday night fight night, I'm confident that the DAZN viewing figures will be exactly the same. You know, mm. what DAZN don't have in place yet is obviously the Sky Sports News machine and almost like that ability. It's like a propaganda machine to just pump out information. But what they do have is the ability to create compelling content and form great partnerships with media outlets that are going to drive huge exposure for our fighters and the build-up of the events. Next week, there'll be some more news dropping about a, a couple of key media partnerships. It's going to bring a whole other level of exposure to what we're doing and our fighters. So that's going to work really well. And, and you know, Dave, you know how smart these people are. They've been around you know, our lives for the last three years, they're incredibly innovative, you know, they're, they're, they're rule breaking, if you like, they're not your institutionalized broadcaster, they think on their feet, they team up in the right way to produce the right content. And, 
you know, this is going to be huge. And yes, you know, there's no doubt that the powerhouse of Sky Sports was a great addition to what we were doing. But don't also underestimate the, pa- the platform of matchroom boxing and even myself that I've worked very hard on over the last 10 years. And you see, saw by yesterday's announcement, you know, we haven't even got into the fights yet. I mean, it was trending number two all day in the UK, I think, behind the UK government. This was a major, major turning point for sport in Britain. And you're going to love what you see. Listen, Eddie, I love it. And I could talk to you all day long, but I don't want to take your time. I know you're really busy, but I do want to turn it over just for a a short second to the fans because the fans do have a lot of questions. So if you'll be uh, generous enough, um, are you okay to answer a couple of fan questions? Yeah, no problem. Okay. Peter Richards asks, what will define success on this DAZN deal? Is it solely subscriber numbers? Um, I guess at the end of the day, yeah. I mean, that's what's going to pay the bills, isn't it? That's what's going to keep the relationship moving. That's what people are going to judge success on. I judge it of how I feel sitting at ringside, to be honest with you. I mean, how I feel while these guys are letting their fists fly. You know, the adrenaline I'm feeling on fight week. You know, the moment when the final, you know, when the, the first bell goes for the main event, that's how I determine success, how I, how I feel. And I love making great fights. Honestly, Dave, sometimes I go to a show that I know deep down it's not a banger. And I feel pretty miserable. You know, all fight week and, you know, I'm up there and I'm pitching this show and I'm trying, but there's no better feeling, is there, going to a venue knowing, wow, this is some card tonight. And that's how I view success, almost like an internal feeling of how I feel in my heart about the show that we're about to to transmit to the world. I know what you're saying. All right. Jimmy Nelson asks, we've seen you alter start and finish times for some U.S. shows to cater for the U.K. audience. Is this something that is going to carry on to hit both time zones on both sides of the pond? Absolutely. In fact, you're going to see more of our U.K. fighters fighting America moving forward, but you're going to see them. You know, either if they're major names in major fights in an earlier start time, or you're going to see them fight earlier on the card. Because we all know that staying up till four or five in the o'clock in the morning is always difficult, especially as you get a little bit older. So if we can see that British talent nearer to prime time, whilst they're getting opportunities to get exposure in another, another, another territory, big. And obviously we saw, with although the Billy Joe Saunders uh, Canelo fight did huge numbers on the zone, so did Ryan Garcia against Luke Campbell. And if you remember, that fight was at, I think, 11 p.m. UK time. So that worked really well. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, Reggie Howells asked, this is the final question. With the new expansion, we already kind of touched on this a little bit, but he said, with the new expansion, are you recruiting more staff? If so, how do I apply? Well, the answer is yes, and plenty of them. So uh, get your CVs into Matchroom. I think LinkedIn is a good place to, to explore those opportunities. Huge opportunities in terms of Matra Media and the production arm. Oh, everything from design to marketing to digital to our legal department. Yeah, so um, good luck to all. And, uh, you know, get those CVs in and uh, we'll do our best to go through them. Listen, Eddie, you've been so generous with your time. Thank you so much. We cannot wait to get things going. But first, of course, we have the exciting show next week in Newcastle. And I look forward to catching up with you there. So until then, thank you very much. Cheers, Dave.